I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Revelation. Tonight we'll be in Revelation 20. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west and north to south to be your true teacher in the Word of God. Um, it's unfortunate as we go into the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, as, as uh, we are going to in uh, chapter 20. Uh, this is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant, God's promise everlasting that David, through his ancestries, will have a king forever on the, the throne of Jerusalem, the throne of Israel. And God is fulfilling that with his son and in the second of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. So unfortunate that 9 out of 10 churches today teach that the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the thousand years, is an allegory. And that could not be further from the truth. Um, it takes the whole Old Testament and the Davidic covenant and washes it away, which is just absolutely apostasy. Um, it brings in the uh, replacement theology, which causes all kinds of problems. We need to take God's uh, words literally and infallible. Um, as Chuck Smith used to say, if we are living in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ today, Satan's chain is way too long. Things are definitely getting worse, not better. It's, it's, it's climaxing to the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and usher in the millennial reign. And as uh, Grant Jeffrey used to say, when Jesus or God, through the word, says something once, you pay attention to it. When Jesus said, verily, verily, he wants you to double pay attention to it. And when he says that multiple times, we are to stand, to put our ear and listen and our eyes to be open and take it seriously and take it literally because God says what he means and means what he says. So here we go. Revelation 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So this was just a normal angel. This wasn't even a cherub that God is sending down to um, take the, the, the old serpent, the, the dragon. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 2, He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. So he's going to cast him into Sheol, into the, 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 the pit and the earth as, as it is today. We saw in chapter 19 that uh, the false prophet and the lawless one, the Antichrist, were already damned to the lake of fire, and that's where Satan and all those who die uh, without accepting Jesus Christ or Jehovah God as their, their, their true God, uh, will spend eternity. We'll see the judgment, the white throne judgment coming up here in a minute. Revelation 20, verse 3, And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and he shut him, shut him up. And he set a seal on it, so that he should not deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be re released for a little while. And in... Um, the Greek it means a season, so Satan will be released for a season after the millennial reign. <clears throat> excuse me, of Jesus Christ is fulfilled to fulfill again the Davidic covenant. So once Christ comes, uh, this thousand-year reign will be of uh, sin-free. There will be earth dwellers that survive the tribulation um, that will be repopulating the earth, and they'll have a DNA sin nature in them still from from Adam but they won't have the trials and tribulations and, and the, the temptations of the lawless one or the evil one and all his band of demons around as we as Christians do today. All the temptations and the, 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 the spiritual realm of, of, of spiritual warfare that's going on throughout the world today. That's why Ephesians 6.10 we, we, we talk about all the time. We have to put on the full armor of God for this fight that Paul says is not against the flesh but it's it's princes of uh, spiritual spiritual princes in the, in the other realm. We have to be on guard for that. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years." Again, a thousand years. So these are the, these are the tribulation saints that are martyred uh, during the tribulation. They did miss the rapture. However, they um, accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, did not take the mark of the beast on the forehead or the arm, uh, as the scripture says. And the Greek word is pelikos. And what that means as far as beheaded means to literally cut off the head 
with an axe or a sword. So um, you, we can see that there's one religion or one nation um, or a group of nations through Islam that that is their way of um, redeeming uh, through, through their god, Allah. And uh, uh, Waleed Shobat believes that this is going to be a uh, Muslim um, type of uh, thing, and the, the mark on the head of the beast uh, will be the Ali Akbar and on the wrist, and that's his teaching, and I, I think there's a lot of validity to that. Again, the scripture is very clear that the, 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 um, the martyred saints will be beheaded, and uh, that is only one on the face of the earth today that uh, engages in that type of execution. Um, and they will be, and their their souls will be resurrected. So Christ will resurrect the 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 uh, the, 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 the saints um, that had to go through the tribulation. So that means they'll have their glorified bodies. So we will all be reunited again. The the Old Testament saints, the saints that were sent to heaven prior to the rapture, those that were taken up in the rapture, and now the uh, the, the, the martyred uh, during the tribulation will all now have glorified bodies and rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And what a glorious time that will be. Revelation 25, 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So he's referring to the rest of the dead, meaning the dead of the spirit. Their flesh uh, had been has died, but there's, the soul lives on, and their spirit is not with Christ. They've denied Christ uh, or accepted the world or the mark of the beast. So they are going to be dead. And we'll see the damnation and the white throne judgment coming to all, um, all that who have rejected uh, Jesus Christ and Jehovah God from the beginning of time and the white throne judgment that we'll see in a minute. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who is part in this first resurrection, over such the second death has no power. So he's saying the second death has no power. The first death is of the flesh, and our soul and spirit live by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior for eternity. Then we will be gathered with him in a glorified body and live in a dimensionality that Christ is in, and we'll live and reign with the Most High God and Jesus Christ for eternity. No more sin, no more temptation, no more trials and tribulations, just love, agape love and peace and tranquility with the Most High God forever. And that is wonderful. First, the thousand years, and then after the white throne judgment, eternity with Christ, meaning outside of time. We will not have our iPhones checking time no longer because time will not matter. We will be in the hands and the heart of our beloved God and our beloved Jesus Christ. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from prison. Again, this is talking about he is released for, for a season. Question is that people always ask me is why did God allow Satan after a thousand years to be released for a season? Now, obviously, I can't speak for God. Um, God is God. He is all knowing. He's omni, uh, omnipresent. He is the beginning. He is the end. He's, he's all knowing. And his ways are higher than our ways. However, it is a test, in my opinion, a, a test to these earth dwellers that had to repopulate. Remember, they still had the sin nature in their DNA. They have not been judged yet into Sheol or soon to be the lake of fire by denying Jesus Christ and Jehovah God by taking the beast, Mark, or living for the world. Um, or did they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior during the tribulation? They survived the tribulation somehow, some way, whether it was an underground bunker or um, however, they will repopulate the earth. And you get more uh, into that in Isaiah 65, talking about um, the, the, the life, the, how long they will live in the millennial reign. As the scripture says, somebody that dies at the age of 100 will be like they died as a child meaning long, long life, kind of implying going back to the days of Noah, the life uh, because of Christ being on the, on, the, on the earth and purity back, that the life of them will, will extend a long time. But Satan is released, so he gives them temptation that they've never been prepared for. 
And believe it or not, many will turn to Satan and come against the Most High God. It's shocking that this happens. But again, he is the great deceiver, and God is going to put an end to it once and for all. Revelation 20, verse 8, And go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. So he's saying it's a great number of these that are going to battle against God through the devil, through Satan, through Gog and Magog. This is not the same Gog and Magog war of Ezekiel 38, 39. This was a whole separate battle after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It's my belief that the Ezekiel war, uh, 38 and 39, which now that Iran has signed a deal uh, today uh, for nuclear uh, capabilities, that is just opening the door for Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy to be fulfilled before our very eyes. I believe that Ezekiel 38 and 39 will be the trigger of the tribulation. That will be the triggering point to kick in the lawless one uh, for the seven-year reign of, uh, of the evil one. And um, that, that has been set. But we know from Scripture that Gog is a spiritual being. That, uh, if you go into the Septuagint, Gog is the, the spiritual demonic king of the locusts. And Magog is a physical landmass that is in the in the in the area of Russia. So it will also be, it will be a spiritual demonic through the the devil using the demonic king of the locusts and through the land of what was um, uh, modern day Russia Magog, and justice will be served by the Most High God once and for all in this final um, battle. Us as Earth. Us as uh, resurrected bodies have no worries. We cannot be tempted by Satan's sin. Once we have accepted him and we have eternal life in our resurrected body, temptation and sin, sin can never enter into us. And we are above all this. We're, we, we reign with Christ and nothing can touch us. No matter what happens with Satan on the earth, nothing can touch us and God has it all under control. Verse, verse 9, they went up to the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. God's fire judgment said, enough. And he devoured them, period, end, Satan, done. Once and for all, let's usher in the millennial, or let's usher in eternity with the most high God that there will be no more sin on the face of the earth. Hallelujah, praise the most high God. Verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone so where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever. So now Satan finally gets his, his, his everlasting home which is the lake of fire and brimstone where he'll be tormented day and night forever. Again, there are different levels of damnation and Satan, the false prophet and the antichrist will be in the deeper bowels of the of the lake of fire getting the worst of the damnation because of the deceit and destruction and sin that they brought on to mankind through the world. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. So the great white throne, Christ is going to open up the Lamb's book of life for the final judgment of those who died to the second death. The first death is the fleshly death. The second death is your soul is eternally um, away from God into the lake of fire. And that's why God is so just. He's going to open up the Lamb's book of life to show that Jesus Christ, our judge, didn't make a mistake. And, you're going, and they're going to see why they didn't make it to heaven. And they're going to know. They'll be convicted. It's just like in the book of Luke where the, the rich man and Lazarus, uh, the rich man uh, who did not feed Lazarus every day, who's the beggar, um, never, never fought with Abraham in Abraham's bosom that he was mis, mis, misjudged and thrown into Sheol. What he tried to get Abraham to do was to warn his brothers not to do what he did so that they wouldn't experience Sheol. And remember what Abraham said in, in Luke. He said, they have Moses and the prophets, meaning they have the, they have the scriptures. They have the word of God. If they don't listen to the word of God, they're not going to listen to me because of their hardened heart. So he knew 
that his damnation into Sheol, the rich man in Luke, was just. And they, those who are going to be judged here in the white throne judgment will, will see, and there will be made no mistaking. And again, every knee will bow that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Everyone will say that Jehovah God is our God and Jesus Christ is the Lord. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. See, according to what they did will be their pun punishment, getting back to the law, an eye for an eye. It will be based on the, 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 the punishment will fit the crime, so to speak of why they, are deny, uh, why they denied Jesus Christ and what they did in, in their sinful nature in the world. Back to the rich man. Remember what he said. He didn't feed the poor. So he asked Lazarus to dip his finger in water to, to, to quench the flame of his tongue. So that wasn't a figure of speech. That was an eye for an eye. That was a judgment because he did not feed Lazarus. His punishment was pain on his tongue, an unquenchable pain and fire on his tongue that would not go away. And that's what it would be uh, eternally for those who have denied Jesus Christ. And the Lamb's book of life, the Lord has revealed to me that the Lamb's book of life is the book, the book, the only book, God's word, that every single date, our date, that we were born, the, uh, the history of the world is in his book, supernaturally encoded. It is everything. It is the lifeblood. And he'll open it up and supernaturally show people before their eyes what they didn't do and the opportunities they had to accept Jesus Christ or Jehovah God as their Lord and Savior for eternal, and they denied it. And there will be shown their sins, and the judgments will be accordingly. Uh, verse 13, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and the death in Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Again, judgment, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Again, the sea, everybody that died in the sea of Sheol, Hades, everything is, all the souls of the dead um, from the beginning of time will be brought to this white throne judgment, and their eternal home will change from Sheol to the lake of fire. Verse 14, then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the final death. Again, we, are, um, we die as Christians, one fleshly death, and then we're born again spiritually and of the soul through salvation through Jesus Christ eternally. eternally. Those who deny Jesus Christ have two deaths, the death of the flesh and the death of the spirit. The spirit will be away from God, but their soul will live on forever away from God in the lake of fire, as the scripture says here. And last verse, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So again, Jesus being the judge of the book of life opens up the record book, being the judge, ruling with a one world government, our king of kings and our lord of hosts, opens up the word of God because he is the word of God. He came back as the title, the living word of God, and he spoke these judgments into place. He opens up his word and shows that there's no mistakes made, that their names have been removed from the Lamb's book of life and their judgment is eternal in the lake of fire. And we don't wish that on anybody, brothers and sisters, no matter how bad and how sinful or how bad somebody's hurt somebody, we offer them love and redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ because eternity away from God in damnation will be horrible, absolutely horrible, and we don't wish that on anybody. And that is the end of Revelation uh, chapter 20. And we're going to pray right now for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I ask you to pray this prayer with me because time is of the essence, brothers and sisters. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me, all my sins, past, present, and future. And I repent of them, meaning forgive me of those sins, and I'm going to turn a new way, as the Scripture says. I'm going to walk in your walk. 
and, 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 and follow you and be obedient to you. And I, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior that you died and rose again after three days and sit at the right hand of the Father and you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I accept you for eternity. I love you. In Jesus' name, if you prayed that prayer, you have eternal life if you meant that in the heart. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you on this broadcast tonight as we will see you next week in Revelation 21. God bless.